Autumn is here. Parts of the canopy are shifting to scarlet and ochre as the air gradually cools and daylight diminishes. I'm trying to allow myself to transition with the season, embracing that natural urge to slow down that comes each year with the cold. It's such a sensory time, but also so fleeting. Days at the cabin have felt really cozy. I've fallen into the pumpkin swing and brought back traditional fall spices and flavors to my meals, soaking in those first few fires and spending more time reading and snuggled up with Mowgli, getting out and exploring the back roads, rain or shine, and sipping evening teas blended from my garden. The apples are now ripe, so I've picked a bunch and I'm so excited to use them. There's definitely been a pocket of peace since finishing the structure, but there's a lot of work to be done before the snow comes. And it feels really soon to say it, but you'd be surprised how quick it really does come. Due to some unforeseen circumstances, getting good firewood has been delayed this year, leaving me no choice but to make my own for the time being. So I started refreshing my felling with a small dead tree near the structure. Then when I moved onto a larger fallen pine, my chain came off and snapped at me. It was pretty startling, but luckily I was in my chaps. I opened up the saw and found that it was coated in dusty debris, so I cleaned it and unwound the tangled chain and the issue never happened again. I know pine isn't ideal, especially unseasoned, but it was sort of a desperate measure situation since nights and even some days have become incredibly chilly and fires are my only heat source off grid. Surprisingly, it's been working out all right. Once that wood was stacked and the mess cleaned, I took care of some weeding to help lessen the spread into the actual garden. It's been tough to keep up with this year.
There's nothing that hits the spot quite like a hot meal on a cold night. It's so cozy. I really need to get the fire going. It's starting to get pretty cold. came out to the field by the cabin and it's mowed. Usually it's so long and lush at this point. I thought I would come out here and search for autumnal hues and the flowers and foliage, see what I could find and start to assemble a wreath. I found a couple things on my journey out here. A lot of young fallen twigs that are still really malleable for the frame of the wreath. And I've been using this bag so much back and forth between the house and the cabin, kind of as like my go-to transporter. And tonight I decided I would use it because it's easily my most durable bag I own. The brand is On The Road Again. It's by my friend Mary. Her company is rooted in sustainability as textile waste has become a huge issue and most of it can be reused or repurposed, though much of it isn't. So Mary takes durable materials sitting in warehouses that are waiting to go to a landfill and repurposes them into fashion-forward goods. Her mother was a seamstress. She learned from her mother. She now lives in the house where she grew up and where her mother lived, and that's where her business is run out of. She does have a range of products. I am head over heels for the market toe. I use it for everything. Like I said, going between the house and the cabin, for running to the farm stands, can gather kindling with it. I know teachers and students have used it to carry heavy books. It's also a fantastic option for a gym bag because of the breathable mesh. She also has an incredible Raymond tote that uses seat belts as the straps and US made grommets to reinforce them. So seriously, these bags are indestructible. You can literally hose this bag down if it gets dirty. I don't know of other bags you can do that with that stay intact. And I am extremely excited to announce that you can now use code Allie at checkout to get 20% off your order. The code and the link will be in the description below. I highly encourage you to check out what she's got. Thank you to Mary and On The Road Again for sponsoring this video. I need to try to go find some more flowers before it gets too dark here. <laughs>
when we bought this house there was no wood stove set up and the chimney is sealed so just got a wood stove a couple days ago it's really heavy it was tough to get inside especially with the rain now i have to figure out what the piping configuration is going to be fall is here winter is on the way and it is getting so cold i'm going to start by taking the diameters of the two holes and then see how far we have between the wood stove and the chimney and then see what is out there at this store for options. Hmm. Now the other component of this is I have no idea the last time the chimney was swept properly and there's also a wood stove downstairs that's inactive. Uh, it's kind of just messed down there. So this will be the primary heat source and just need to figure out, There's so there's probably two flues and cleaning those up. A professional can't come out until November, which puts us in a weird gap of time because the wood needs to start getting burned soon. That being said, my dad has a chimney sweeping kit and I'm sure I can learn from him. So I'll give that a go in the meantime. Well, this is where the second wood stove in the house is located down in the basement. Got that out of the way and this is the clean out. When you sweep the chimney, everything comes down here and then you need to remove all this. I just went to check how it is right now and stuff's going to start pouring out of here if I open this door up all the way. Indicates that it probably hasn't been cleaned in a while or last time it was, they didn't take all this out. Good amount of work ahead to get this usable and safe. piping almost reached perfectly but there's a couple inch gap where I am going to have to use the second piece to connect it all together. The only issue is I don't have my regular tin metal snips here. I had one pair but it was really not working well if you can see. Surprisingly my regular scissors are actually doing a much better job so I just have to be super careful. This is really sharp. Go around the whole outer side and then connect everything together. set up and the fire is starting so we will have reliable heat for the cold season and the foreseeable future. It's putting out a good amount of heat. I don't have great firewood right now. I had some old split wood outside that wasn't covered so it's a little damp. Just stuff from the previous owner. Oh my gosh it makes a world of difference to have heat obviously but yeah I've just been kind of pushing it to the limits here and dealing with the cold. Nothing freezing yet, so I haven't had to worry about the pipes. So much peace of mind now. I'm 
going to make some fire cider for the cold season and essentially it's just some herbs which I've already collected from my garden. Um, you can really get creative with what you want to put in. I also picked peppers. I'm adding a leek this year too. I have an onion which is so tiny but I don't want to let it go to waste. It was getting close to rotting in the ground so it wasn't going to get any bigger. I've got some ginger here and an orange for some vitamin C and I'm going to chop it all up and infuse it. It'll sit for about a month at room temperature out of the sunlight and then I'll be able to strain it, take a shot every day, boost immunity, clear the sinuses, and enjoy the tastes of the harvest season. I wish my elder bush produced this year gave me some elderflower, elderberry, but it's really sticking to the mantra roots before fruits, even though it's been a couple years now. <laughs> This was my first year growing leeks actually, so it's cool that I'll get to use it in this recipe this year. Some other things that I was thinking of that I could grab for my next batch, I have a ton of these jars, would probably be rose hips, pine needles, things like that. <laughs> mm. I might even be able to top this off a little bit more. The rubber gaskets on these containers are so handy as opposed to conventional mason jars with the metal lid. Always need to separate the acidity with some parchment paper or something so there's not rust happening. But with these, you just close them and they're good to go. Gotta find a good spot for this in the cabin now. The harvests are so bountiful right now and my witch hazel is in full bloom. So I went up to the trees across from the garden and started to gather some for a little project I've been wanting to do. Quite frankly, I have a lot more witch hazel than I really need. So I'll probably just do one extract tonight and then do a couple more this week and gift them to friends and family. But what I'm interested in doing is making a shelf stable witch hazel that can be used internally because a lot of people are familiar using it externally for acne or to cleanse, to disinfect. And interestingly, pretty much all the stuff you buy in the store, unless it says it's a low alcohol witch hazel extract, is mostly just alcohol. You actually don't even have to put any in it. You would just have to make sure you consume it in the right amount of time. But in doing it this way, you have a much more potent blend. You can use every part of this. You need about this much for tonight's batch, simmering for half an hour until it reduces.
So now I can use this to help me fight colds or mucus buildup, uh, sinus infections. It's been used traditionally for that when taken internally. Or I could use this to cleanse my face if I wanted to, but yeah, I want to have this around as it gets chilly outside and colds start coming on, sicknesses. Give this a test. And around this time, Kyle returned home for good from his summer job by the coast, and we had a trip planned into the mountains to one of our favorite spots to take in peak foliage. 